golden age of Cybertron has come again. Hey guys, hello gorgeous. Welcome back to the 80s Toy Museum, part 9 of a 12 part saga. Thanks for all the amazing comments for all the past virtual tour videos, and for sharing your heartfelt memories in the recent G1 Optimus Prime video. So glad to hear so many of you, after watching that video, say, I've had these overwhelming feelings. Hope they continue with today's virtual tour. We are being called to a very ancient and sacred place. That's right, Skylinks. It's the Transformers G1 Collection. How did this all happen? Well, Prime, it's amazing how much extra cash you have left over for your hobby if you don't smoke, drink, or do drugs. Not preaching, just beseeching. There's better things to spend your money on than fleeting pleasures, and the 80s Toy Museum was made possible because of the money I didn't smoke or drink away. Probably not a message some adult viewers want to hear, but keep in mind I hear from a lot of parents who say their kids love this channel, so I feel it's my... duty... To pass on some great advice I got from my heroes growing up. Take it from me, you'll be healthier and happier in the long run, and be able to pass it on to others as well. Okay, now that the real talk is out of the way, let them have it! This is a blend of the original releases, commemorative and encore reissues, and a few modern interpretations that I thought looked and scaled better than the originals. Although Action Masters are technically still part of G1, I don't have any of them anymore. Transformers that don't transform that are the same size as G.I. Joe but have less detail and articulation? Uh, whose dumb idea was that? That's a story for another time, Cup. The Decepticons just joined the party. That's right, Spike. Like the Masterpiece section, the top shelf of this section holds the Decepticons. Decepticons? Yeah, you know rule bar, big ugly guys made of metal. Who wanna melt us all down into scrap? And it spans from the beginning of the line in 1984 to just about the end. On the left side are the original Decepts. Soundwave and his tapes. Rumble, activate pile drivers. The mighty Megatron. Leader of the Decepticons! Shockwave in the back. Oh, look! What is it? It's the Insecticons. The Insecticons and Seeker Jets. Both the original 84 Trio and the 85 Coneheads. Then there's a rare G2 offering, the Yellow Repaint Constructicons, since the original green versions are elsewhere in combined mode. And then the post-movie Decepts. Decepticons! There's the Duocon, Battle Trap, and Unicron's minions, Cyclonus, Scourge, and Galvatron. Anime reissue. Silence! Ugh, not this again. Sorry, Galvatron. This time your bargaining posture is highly dubious. But remember, we belong to him. I belong to nobody! I will obey! Excellent. For now! There are some Platinum reissue Predacons in the back, and my original Decepticon Power Masters. We're under attack! Oh no, the Decepticons have Power Masters too! Dreadwind with High Test, and Darkwing with Throttle. And even though they're only a step above Action Masters for me, 89 Starscreams in the back representing the Pretenders. Give me a new body now! Next up, the arch rivals of the Decepticons. We're Autobots. For the sake of going in chronological order, I'll drop down a few shelves and start with the 84 collection. The gang's all here. All 18 original Arcbots that crashed on Earth four million years ago. There's the six Minibots, Huffer, Wind Charger, Gears, Cliff Jumper, Brawn, and Bumblebee. And the 11 Carbots, Hound, Ironhide, with Gear for Toys upgraded head and arms, Trailbreaker, Prowl, Ratchet with the same upgrade as Ironhide, Wheeljack, Sunstreaker, Blue Streak, Sideswipe, Mirage, and Jazz. Ready, Prime! Let's roll! 
And the leader, and as discussed in my 84 Optimus feature, one of my biggest heroes, Optimus Prime. Thanks! Along with a few Autobot decoys on the combat deck. To the right are some early 85 offerings. First we have the Dinobots, ready for a special mission. Dinobots, we've got a job for you. Me, Grimlock, no like orders. Me, Slag, no like anything. There's Snarl, Sludge, Grimlock, Slag, and Swoop. In the back are the jump starters. In the world of the Transformers, no Autobot can jump into action faster than jump starters. Twin twist and top spin. And I opted for the more tune accurate looking Generations Jetfire slash Skyfire to display alongside his Autobot cohorts instead of the Robotech looking G1 Jetfire. One shelf up are the reinforcements from Cybertron in 85. New Autobots join Optimus Prime. Smokescreen, tracks, hoist, inferno, red alert, and grapple. Along with the minibots, Bumblebee anime version is in there. Along with the new crew of Powerglide, Warpath, Cosmos, Sea Spray, and Beachcomber. And the New Year Convoy reissue of Optimus from who knows where. Offhand, I'd say Japan. Here's what you call turning a negative into a positive. I used to have the Diamond Select Matrix with light up base. Turns out that particular matrix is a lot more fragile than the one in the movie. When I dropped mine, it didn't bounce. It shattered into a hundred pieces. A bummer to be sure, but the base was still fine. So I use it now as the base for Vector Sigma. I am Vector Sigma. Before Cybertron was, I was. And since they never made a toy of him, but he's just as much a part of the Autobots, I have this ex Gokin rendition of Alpha Trion, the creator of Optimus Prime. The key lights up Vector Sigma now, or if you lose it, Alpha can unlock it as well. I think I have a key on me. I wasn't a fan of how the color would change when the Matrix was on it, but I think it suits the great and powerful Vector Sigma much better. Vector Sigma commands it! Thanks to Alpha Trion tapping into the Matrix, the Decepticons no longer have a monopoly in the sky. You're gonna have to deal with the aerial bots first! Fireflight, Air Raid, Skydive, Slingshot, and their leader, Silverbolt who combine to form Superion. And beside them are the Protectobots. The Protectobots can transform into Defensor. First Aid, Blades, Groove, Streetwise, and Hotspot, who have a similar talent for combining. Receptor's better suited observing from the back than fighting on the front lines. Uh, your point is well taken, sir. And Blaster's busting out some tunes as well. Hold on to your dancing shoes and go, man, go! And the big boy. My supreme birthday present in 1985. Oh no, look! It's Mega Supreme! Moving on up takes us into the movie era. This shelf is a bit more of a hodgepodge of official and third-party items than the other shelves. To the left we have a Masterpiece Grimlock who I think actually scales perfectly in Dino mode with the 86 Autobots. And there's the Witwicky family, Spike, Daniel, and Carly. We've got Blaster's Tape Army, Steeljaw, Rewind, Eject, and Ramhorn. <laughs> There's some original bots that managed to survive the movie. Bumblebee, Cliffjumper, and Jazz. Universe Legends Wheelie with a PVC Daniel in exosuit. The 86 Minibots, Hubcap, Tailgate, Outback, who no Decept could slip past. Not with my trusty Decepticon detector. No such thing. You know that, and I know that, but... Wheelie, Swerve, and Pipes. Some more car bots. And more Autobots join Optimus Prime. Cup reminds me of the battle on Beta 4. Hot Rod. Watch my smoke. Blur. They see me. Now you don't. And the bot I thought was going to take Prime's place in 1986. Ultra Magnus. The courageous Ultra Magnus is a born leader. He's also a red herring for this guy. Introducing Rodimus Prime. 
the chosen one who would lead the Autobots for years to come. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, he'd be demoted by the end of the year, actually. Since they never made her back in the day, this Takara Legends RC blends in nicely with these G1 bots. And the Triple Changers, Broadside, Springer, and Sandstorm. Impossible Toys Spike and Daniel in exosuits. And he's back! Optimus Prime. And now no force in the universe will stop me. Music Label Edition. Six Gun from Metroplex hanging out in the back. Well, well, Commander Modesty's here! He may not be very modest, but Skylinks often knew the path to victory. My superior talents will guide us there! Some old friends received new paint jobs in the return of Optimus Prime. Look at this new paint job! Here's a G2 Gold Chrome Deco for Goldbug. And Optimus Prime insulated from the hate plague. And since the G1 Rekgar was severely lacking mustache, I've got a Generations version in the back, riding a junkie on. It's time to play! End of the line, my Valentine! Think 86 was the last great year of Transformers toys? No way! You've got to see this! Next is 1987, The Masters Era Begins, where flesh and metal combine to make the Transformers more, much more, than meets the eye. There's the original five Autobot Headmasters. The heads of those metal beams become robotic exosuits. Hardhead with Duros, Brainstorm with Arcana, the Autobot that forms the head of Fortress Maximus, Cerebros, with a tune accurate head. How did you accomplish that? Easy, it's from the Head Robots Centurion set, although I took the arms off to make it more tune accurate. And there's Highbrow with Gort, and Chrome Dome with Mr. Stylor Man. In the back is the double agent Punch, who can infiltrate enemy strongholds as a Decepticon named Counter Punch. And the Autobot clones, Fastlane, Cloud Ranker, who look identical in robot mode, but have different alternate modes, a jet and a dragster. Then in front is 87's version of the Minibots. Grunbots, charge! Roll bar, wide load, searchlight, freeway, chase, and it's not the Minibots without Bumblebee. I've gone beyond being just plain old Bumblebee. I'm a gold bug. <laughs> that you are, Bumblebee. So from now on, that's exactly who you'll be. Gold bug. I've also got a Power Master Optimus regular version because I always thought he scaled great with the Headmasters. And in behind is the most logical Autobot, the Technobot's combined form of Computron. My computation capacity is nearly infinite. Too bad you can't say the same thing about your charisma. Next up are the Autobot Target Masters, with some Master Shooter updates. Six Rebel Sharpshooters, six Autobots. I'll start with Crosshairs. Well, you'd better. And his Sniper, Pinpointer. Sure shot with his Buzz Killer, Spoil Sport. And Point Blank with his Maker of Peace, Peacemaker. That's not all, not all by a long shot, not by a long shot, no sir. <laughs> That's right, the 86 Carbots got upgraded to Target Masters as well. Blur with his quick shot Haywire, Cup with his old timer Recoil, and Hot Rod with his bolt action Firebolt. Everyone a crack shot. I really like the gimmicks of heads and weapons being able to turn into little guys, and was glad to see the gimmick continue in 1988 with Power Master. <laughs> That unlocks their transformer energy. There's Slapdash with Lube, Getaway with Rev, and Joyride with Hotwire, plus God Bomber from the Godgin Ray Takara reissue in the back, and Power Master Optimus Prime with High Q. Look, Optimus is becoming a super Power Master! And the final Power Master, the Mercenary Double Dealer with Knock and Scar. I skipped most of the Pretender collection since they're not really my cup of Energon, but since these three characters have sentimental value, I decided to crack their shells. Optimus Prime is under attack! He needs the greatest Transformers ever! Optimus, we're here! As Pretenders! Jazz, Bumblebee, you're back! And me, Greenlock! 
classic pretenders Jazz, Bumblebee, and Grimlock represent the end of the G1 story to me. And then, there's the epilogue. Turbo Masters! After the disappointment of Action Masters in 1990, and nothing on the shelves in 1991, I thought the line had been reborn in 1992 when I saw these at my local Toys R Us. I had no idea who they were, and I didn't care. Transformers could transform again! Little did I know it was actually more of a last gasp than a second wind. But these guys are pretty cool, and feel more like a distant future of the G1 timeline than part of G2. After all the gimmicks from previous years, it was nice to see a return to the original 84 gimmicks, being able to transform and firing missiles. You've all proved yourself worthy Autobots. And they threw in one more subtle feature. Turbo Masters were the first Transformers to use light piping, giving them glowing eyes when light shines from overhead. Only available in European, Australasian, and Canadian markets in 1992, we've got Scorch, Boss, the leader Thunderclash, Flash, and Hurricane, and some air support from Rotorstorm. And in the back, a quartet of European exclusive Accelerators, released in 1993, in the grey area between G1 and G2. The most flatulent Autobot, Windbreaker, Rapido, Scram, and Turbofire. And I had a couple of giants, but they'd be too heavy to put on an elevated shelf, so how about on the floor? That's it! It just might work! This final section is a mishmash of Autobot and Decepticon Titans from various years, starting with the biggest G1 Transformer ever made, Fortress Maximus. Fortress Maximus! The colossal Headmaster Autobot City! With a new head by Perfect Effect, Warden. With this behemoth on their side, there's only one thing the Decepticons can do. Kiss your afterburners goodbye, Decepticon slime! And this giant has a very special heart beating within his chest. It's Blesser. The fans project Target Master that was made to help the Red Cross raise funds for the earthquake and tsunami relief efforts in Japan in 2011. There's the original Transformers combiner, Devastator with some third-party upgrade parts to fill him out a bit, and his arch-nemesis, Omega Supreme. This time super-powered with crazy Debbie parts. And my favorite city rivalry, Trypticon vs. Metroplex. The super-powered God Ginray. and the Decepticon Headmaster Leader, Scorponok, featuring a custom face from Shapeways. This time's Scorponok! And last, but certainly not least, the most awesome G1 combiner, Predaking. He is right! Predacons unite! Also with upgraded Crazy Devi parts. And a couple of boxes and other extras in the back that I didn't have the heart to pack up into storage. And that's my Transformers G1 collection. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd say... All of them! Yep, if it's on my shelf, it's because it means something special to me. And as you can see, Transformers in the 80s, and for a cup of coffee in the 90s, was a whole lot of special to me. Bingo! Next time out, we'll be taking a look at another universe that was very special to me, and the masters who resided in it. Hope you enjoyed this visit to the 80s Toy Museum and maybe even learned a few things. We're all a little wiser now. Big thanks to the wonderful people supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd also like to keep the channel going, visit patreon.com slash michaelmercy to contribute. As a show of thanks, you'll get Patreon-exclusive rewards, like being able to vote on upcoming topics, and even make a special request for any toy in the toy museum or topic you'd like to see discussed. If you have a G1 memory, be a share master in the comment section. Share the video with your fellow trans fans. And to join the faction, give the subscribe button impaction. Take it away, Optimus. Autobots, transforms and rise!